Hey there viewers and welcome back to the self Man Oil channel. Sitting inside the 2016 Hondu Pilot. And the money light is not on. However, the airbag light is on. And I'm pretty sure I know what's wrong with it. I took a big fat guess and I ordered us a clock spring. Because what else really goes wrong with a Hondu? Uh, I've never done one in one of these. Uh, but I did make the observation the other day when the lady stopped in. I'm just letting this auto scan here. Let me get this going. I can't do two things at once. I'm not a woman. Um, I did make the observation that A, the airbag light is on. And I also noticed uh, when she was here, I was fiddling with buttons on the steering wheel and the information buttons down here doesn't work. Don't work. Uh, so the up and down arrow and the reset button, it doesn't allow me to uh, toggle through the menu. So therefore in my uh, little head, I thought, you know what? That sounds like a bad clock spring because I doubt that we have an airbag problem plus some button problems. And being that, uh, I assume they all use the same spiral cable uh, in the little dash here, steering wheel, column, losing the words today. Uh, I assume that's what's going on with it. So uh, let's take in, we're gonna pop right into the SRS safety restraint systems. Get my fingers to work. We're gonna pull some codes out of it and see if it has codes for the driver's side airbag. And if it does, uh, the easiest testing method probably is going to be to go right to the clock spring. Um, that way we can get to both halves of it, hopefully check for continuity through it. A lot of times these buttons, like a lot of buttons on a steering wheel, use multiplexing where it'll use, you know, just one or two wires and, you know, send the signals down through those. I don't know if that's the case here, but I'm just guessing. So let's see what we have here. We have your classic B0001 and a 2. Open or increase resistance in the driver's airbag first inflator and the second inflator. So it must be a two-stage airbag. And I'm going to assume that if we erase these codes that they're going to come right back. It's going to be my guess. Turn the ignition switch off. She's push button. Wait a minute here. Turn it on. No codes detected. Let's let's go ahead and read the codes again. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Let's uh, wiggle this steering wheel here a little bit. Oh, hold on. Low tire pressure. Let's take it fired up. Let's see. So I'm gonna push these buttons here. Yeah. See, I'm pushing the button, and we're not toggling anything. So let's turn the steering wheel. We'll do a full loop de loop here. Of course we can't, hey, there we go. Now the airbag light's on. Whoop. Supplemental restraint system. I don't know what's going on, lots of lights. So now, if we go to trouble codes, I'm sure our codes are back. Bada bing, bada boom. So we have some something to go on here. I don't think Honda gives you much data. No, they don't. So let's go for it. So I hope we're all on the same page here. At least, uh, agree or agree to disagree. Uh, I think what we have to do now is we'll unhook the battery. We'll see what it takes to get the airbag out and uh, run some run some checks on it. The car is out of warranty. It has too many miles, I think. Yeah, it's got 68,000 on it. So she's out of warranty. We'll get the battery unhooked. We'll roll down a window before we lock the keys in it or do something silly and uh, see what we need to do to get things apart. I see a hole here and a hole here. So I imagine something in there, pop the steering wheel, get it off. Uh, this should also have, I imagine, a uh, steering wheel sensor in it. Um, the clock spring was relatively cheap, like super cheap, so I doubt it comes with all the stuff. So let's get started. All right, so I unhooked the battery and it looks like these are Torx bit. I don't know if I got enough lead in my pencil. Oh, I do today. Must have refilled the pencil. I don't know if those bolts come all the way out. Yep, they do. Fantastic, so they're just a Torx head. I don't know what I'm using here, T30. First try. So we'll scoot it around here. No steering wheel lock, thankfully. I've got the battery unhooked also. That was step one. Let's see if we can get in there. There's that one. And then after we take these out, the airbag should. Slip right out of there. I'm thinking. 
There's that one. Okay. Okay, are my wheels straight, Jay? Are my wheels straight? Okay. Well, I mean, close enough? Yeah. Okay, all right. So I'll make sure I wasn't off here. Oh, it's like diffusing a bomb. Okay, so we'll open this back up here a little bit. And let's see what we have under here. Looks like we have a ground wire because this is our horn switch. So we have a ground wire and we have two airbag connectors there. Um, I wonder if there's anything special about unhooking them. They got little white tabs. I assume we pull out on the white tabs and they will disconnect. Let's find out. Figured I'd bring you closer in case it exploded. Don't want to miss a good video opportunity. So we got little white tabs. Got no fingernail left on that finger, so. Let's see. Well, I need some kind of device. Come on, baby. There she goes. Yes, yeah, so you gotta pull them little white tabs back. Boy, this is not. They don't make these for sausage fingers, I'll tell you that much. Let's see. Come on, baby. All right. Hey, Jay. Would you mind handing me a pocket screwdriver? There's some right over here on the bench. Yeah, right over here on the bench there's some, if you wouldn't mind, please. I just don't have enough fingernail. Yeah, I got brand new ones. Brand new gear wrench, huh? Yep. Today's show is brought to you by Gear Wrench, not a sponsor. Look that one down. Should have had them hand me two of them. I kind of need two of them here. Yeah. See if I can get that one down with my fingernail and hold it. They're kind of a piss pot to, to do here. Let me just look at the one we just took off so I can see what that does. Spring loaded little things. Of course, they don't give you quite enough wire to. Hey, Jay, will you hand me a second one? It's getting serious in here. All right. I think they sent more than one. Yes, good thing. I'll tell you, when we hit, we get sponsors, we hit the big time. I mean, big folks at Gear Ranks, they were pretty nice about that. Yeah, sending us pocket screwdrivers. And little picks and everything. There she goes. All right, hallelujah. Too bad they didn't send us some regular tools, huh? Yeah, hint, hint, hint. And then we've got. Uh, Got this little piece of foam over the top of this connector for the ground, but I'm trying to just feel through it to see if there's, oh, there is, there's a little pinch tab right up towards the end of it. Now this is just the ground, but there's a little pinch tab right there. I can feel it, so I gave it a squeeze. That hooks onto the ground, and then we'll set the airbag to the side. And then, as I was mentioning, let me get my light up here. Squeeze it there. You've got to take these little white tabs and pull them back toward you. So see how they're spring-loaded like that? But you got to do both of them at the same time, according to service data, and it pushes that whole thing back. A little tedious. Um, so there's that. And then we have one connector up towards the top here. Let me set down one of these screwdrivers on our clock spring. So we're going to take and we'll unplug it. Hopefully. What else do we have? What's holding that in? Well, we're just gonna unplug. I hope I can get it out all the way I can. Okay. So areas of potential problem are uh, open circuit from here to that connector. But honestly, what are the odds that we've got, you know, at least two opens, one on each airbag? Uh, pretty slim is gonna be my answer to that question. Let me just get rid of this extra tape here. Pretty slim. Uh, am I gonna do a resistance check on it? Probably should. But I'm not. We're gonna keep. We're gonna keep motoring. Uh, how many wires do we have going into this thing? Quite a few. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least. I don't know if there's any in the bottom row. We're gonna get the steering wheel out of the way. I'm certain we're gonna find our problem in the clock spring. Just a big fat guess. If I'm wrong, I'm wasting a ton of time. But that's okay. I'm the boss. Oh, wrong size, fella. Ten mil, first try. 
Let's see if we can't crack this bolt loose. Mother loving. Come on, baby. I ain't got quite enough in me. Um, let's just, uh, before we get too excited, let's just go ahead and check service data. Make a darn sure it's not some silly thing like left hand thread or something weird. Move steering wheel, let's see. Set wheel straight ahead, disconnect connector, loosen steering wheel bolt. Three turns, install a commercially available steering wheel puller. On the steering wheel, free the steering wheel from the shaft by pressure on the bolt. The puller, do not tap the steering wheel, cap for moving, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're good. Just gotta quit being a puss. Ready, one, two, three, go. Mother, mother, son of a... Oh. Hey, Jay, yeah. you wanna come hang on this steering wheel for me? Sure. I gotta go full gorilla. I, I can't get enough friction. Get the All right. Jason's gonna come. This is where we wish we had a steering wheel lock. Of course, you shouldn't torque against the steering wheel lock that much because um, it could break. They're usually just in like pot metal. You can grab a steering wheel lock on most cars and just break them. Right. Hang on to that thing. Don't you touch my leg. You ready? Oh, jeez, oh, swingers. The old wheel is not coming off the high new. Gee. So it's on there. Wow. Little guy at the Honda factory was angry when he put that one in. Yeah, I want to come down. <laughs> or he put a uh, little red Loctite on it, one or the other. Yeah. Uh, thank you for not touching my leg. Yeah. Making things. Yeah. Thanks for not making things weird, Jason. All right. Yeah, it feels like there's Loctite on it. Just have a look. Oh yeah, wow. Not only Loctite, the green Loctite. Uh, what I want to do, I took that out against Honda's recommendation because I don't know if where this is splined, if there is a common spline, you know, like a double spliner. And I just want to have a look, see it does not appear that there is. So in that case, what we want to do is we want to make our own mark because I don't want to be dilly daily and putting this thing back together and having it not perfectly aligned and you know I have to take it off, turn it one spline because these splines are super fine. Girl, your, your spines are super fine. So let's get a paint marker, put a little dab on it. So I'm going to try to put a little dab without letting it bleed all over. It's the only problem with paint markers, they have a tendency to bleed a little. All right, that looks good there. I'm gonna give myself another mark off to the side, just for just for grins and giggles here. All right, we got two marks on there. Now we will not screw this in all the way, but we'll get it started. I don't know if we're gonna have to use a commercially available puller or not. It does have threads in it though off to either side. We would just have to stick some bolts in, steering wheel puller. All right, we got that threaded in. Just try this. Yeah, that's right, baby. Who needs a puller? Who needs a puller when you brought the guns? Okay. Whoa. It looks like a straight spline. It doesn't even look like a tapered shaft, to be honest with you. So we're gonna take and wiggle this off. Okay, we do have some wires that are coming through. Don't rotate on me, Mr. Clock Spring. Mr. Clock Springy. So look at that, that's interesting to know. The airbag wires are part of the Clock Spring non-removable piece. There's that. Those wires come up around, don't see any. There's a lot of wires running through that sucker. Maybe it doesn't use multiplexing. Maybe perhaps it does, but on multiple for each button set, perhaps. Hard to say. Not our concern currently. Uh, looks like somebody's already been in here. That's what, I, that's what I've noticed. I noticed that the Torx bit screws had, the heads are a little boogered up. And then that you, we can obviously see marks right here where there's been, you know, prying devices underneath there uh, doing what, Prime devices do. 
So let's look at service data. I don't mean to be dragging you guys along with this and boring you to death. Column cover removal. Adjust your telescoping steering wheel to the full tilt down. Adjust the steering column to the full tilt down and full telescopic out. That had been freaking handy to know with the steering wheel on it. Remove the dashboard meet, meter visor blind cover A. Down. Can we go fully out? Fully out. Lock. Oh, it's like this little carpety thing back here. Oh, that's not even clicked in. <laughs> that makes it easy. Last guy never even put it back in all the way. There's that. So it's just a little felt thing back there. Uh, turn steering wheel 90 degrees. We already took the steering wheel off. Release hook A, which is the little spot that's already chowdered up. Turn it 180 clockwise, release that one. Remove upper column cover. Turn the steering wheel to access the mounting screws. Well, we don't have to access the mounting screws because our steering wheel is already gone. So apparently this just comes up according to the data. Up and out, so it has little hooky doodads there. Little clippy doodads there. Oh, okay, so it hooks on inside here Another half of that hook and then looks like some Phillips head screws here I don't know if the gear wrench quite has it in it probably ought to just go get the right tool sometimes you run what you run you know what I mean all right that works beautifully and this I assume pulls the lower column cover off hopefully Mother lover. Nope, gotta go get something else. Gotta milk this for as long as I can. Jason's pulling the transmission out of a Jeep, so <laughs> if I play my cards right, I won't even have to help. Let's see. Does this thing come off? I don't know. Let's, uh, sometimes it's easier to look. Remove screw, then remove the lower column cover A. Uh, why does it show? Turn the steering wheel, access, screw, fastener, location. Ah, a little triangle, fastener, location. Must be one from the bottom. Let me give it a feel. Hopefully it's Phillips head because that's what I've got in my hand here. Let's just feel around in there. Oh, I don't want to get out. Oh, nope, feels like a Phillips head. I just felt it engage. so close <laughs> all right not as young as I used to be I'm gonna have to take a look <laughs> let's see where are you little fella ah she's right there in the open there it is so that one down there is a little different than the one up top it was Washer headed screw him a jig. And maybe we have to raise the steering column back to the top. How do you get out of there, buddy? You need to come out all the way for what we gotta do. What a thunder. You know what? We're just gonna leave it because we don't really need to take it out all the way. What we do need to do is we need to get to the back side of the clock spring here. We need to unplug it. There's a couple plugs, looks like three probably. Keep that right there. I'm gonna push the little release tab on the side. There's a white connector, and then we have the airbag connector down here which usually they've got some kind of funny monkey business. So we're going to have to look at that. What holds this thing on? Anything? Just a clip, perhaps? Yeah, i got a clip there. We 
Looks like we got a clip over here. Oh, looks like we got a clip over here. Well, that was easy. Unclip that. I'm gonna keep her in the straight position so we can figure out what holds that connector in. So we're looking at this yellow connector at the bottom. I don't know. Sometimes airbag connectors are just so weird. Just because I don't know what holds them together. Poke around on it first here. Oh, looks like it's got a black slidey thing. I'll grab that black thing, slide it back. What's that do for us? Ooh, unhooks it. Well, that's nice. So I'm assuming, without even looking at a diagram, that these four wires run down to these four wires because yellow connector, yellow connector. Uh, these two white connectors, we probably have a steering angle sensor. Right here it says do not drop. So this is probably the steering angle sensor, I believe it is, because you can see the little white dongers there. So, hey, shoe fly. Uh, so let's find out what wire colors what. Let's see if any of these match. We got a green. Nope, none of those colors match. But let's just see if we have any continuity from here to here. And that'll tell us a lot. Neighbor must have saw me with my camera. <laughs> Started his lawnmower, he's mowing. No rain in four months, but we're still mowing. Uh, anyhow, folks, so here it is. It's out in the wild. Now, there is a bit of a dilemma. You would think that you could just ohm test from here to here, as I stated. However, this has a shorting bar in it. Uh, which is hard to explain, but down inside on the pins around this connector that you can't see because our lighting is crap. When you unplug the connector, it has another metal bar that shorts across them. So what you can do is you can take like a little plastic tab. This is just like off a piece of packaging and you can slip it down in there. I just got to get where I can see it. And you can slip it right between the shorting bar and the pins and then that will allow you to do your testing however those pins are inky dinky if that's a word so it's going to be hard to do like this but i think what we can do is just use the shorting pins to our advantage because technically if this clock spring is good we'll have perfect continuity across these two because these wires essentially go down through the through the spiral cable and then short down here so if there's an open or high resistance we should be able to see it because technically this should be like zero ohms or close to it whatever our leads are on our meter uh, which I have right here. We'll set this up. If I do it right, I'll get it right in the camera angle where you can't see it, or at least have a good glare on it to make things even better. What do you expect, folks? Low production film here. Uh, so we're at zero ohms. Let's get, uh, get these little guys here. These things are crap. What do we have in our leads? We have 0 0.3, we'll call it, in our leads. And then we're gonna use, this thing doesn't fit worth the beans. Let me squish this down a little. I should just grab some different leads, but I think for the purpose of what we're doing, this will work fine. Squish that back on there. Let's just double check. Point one, look at that, I made it better. We're gonna grab some probes here. I got us a crooked needle and a straight needle. Now typically I wouldn't front probe but I think this thing is gonna be junk. We can just pick one to start with. These are just about the same thing as the pin size, lightly probing in there, don't touch your meter leads. What do we have? Three ohms, that's interesting. Let's kind of wiggle it around here. 2.8, 3.2, I don't wanna do a full 360, 3.6. Usually the airbags themselves are, uh, you know, two ohms three ohms, three and a half, somewhere it's in there. So that's interesting. That one's a tad high, nothing too exciting. I was kind of hoping to just see it open. Let's check this one. So everybody says, whoa, 111. Oh, 65. Oh, open, 200. She's bouncing all over the place. 240. It's gotta be an open in there somewhere. But that's all right, oh, right there. Oh, oh, she changed, she's all arranging. We're up in the thousand ohms, 168,000 ohms. So we're up in the kilo ohm scale. So 
that's an easy test. And like I say, we use the shorting bar to our advantage. If you want it to go through and check individual pins, like I say, you've got to be able to get the shorting bar pushed away. Piece of, a little thin piece of cardboard, a little thin piece of plastic. Like I say, you'll see where they short together when you look in there because I'll, I'll prove it to you. Let me slip this in. We'll isolate these pins and see which one's the easiest one to get into. So right now, one of these two should be open circuited, right? Because I've, I've removed the shorting bar. I don't know which one it is. We'll test this one. Nope, that one's at three and a half ohms. So it's not that one. Now we'll check this one. Ah, it's that one. See how that's open? Now if I reach under here and remove the piece of plastic, it should go together at 109 ohms. So that works. Uh, no sense in even checking the rest of the clock screen uh, because we know the airbag side of it's bad. I'll get the brand new hot do one that I've got over here. That's right here. We'll leave the grenade pin in it. We do have to transfer the switch here or the uh, steering wheel sensor. Let me just look here. I want to make sure. Everything looks right. Everything looks right here. I want to make sure we have that. We don't want to have that 180 off. That would stink. Um, we'll see what it takes to get that off. It looks like just some tabs here. I guess we can just keep rolling with it. Yeah. Keep doing what we got to do. Uh, let's see. Do not drop. That's all it says. Don't drop. Whatever we do, don't drop this. So I'm just going to go through and try to pry these tabs back. If these tabs break, it's not a big deal because it has them on a new clock spring. Perhaps it would be easier to just break them off, that way they don't keep relatching on us. Let's see here. Probably should look in service data before we go right off this device. This is usually what makes a clock spring very expensive is the steering angle sensor. So we're going to keep that just as it was or is. We're going to come right down on this one. We're going to have to rotate it just a little bit to line up our tabs. And then we should be able to just click it in place. And now we should be able to go put this whole mess back on the car. And technically, if everything goes right, we should not have an airbag light when we're done. And hopefully our buttons work uh, if the buttons don't work, we at least fix the airbag light and then we'll have to diagnose the buttons, but I got a pretty good suspicion. Some days you just got to go with your gut, folks. Some days your gut can cost you a lot of money, though, if you're wrong. And who hasn't been wrong before? This guy has, I'll tell you that. Let's uh, get things plugged in. We'll get the airbag one plugged in. That one's plugged in. And what you could do now, so in some cases, like on GMs or something where you can read airbag resistance, live data, uh, what you would do if you suspect, you know, a spiral cable, just go to your live data, unplug your airbag, drop in a 3 ohm resistor or a 2 ohm resistor here and just look at it on live data while you're wiggling it and then you'll see it move. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. What's up, Mrs. O? You missed something? Oh, yeah. Yes. Remember we talked about that? Yes. Just a minute. I got it. Just a minute. Don't you recall yesterday um, when you oh. came out and Mr. P called? Um, yeah. And, and I gave him a total, which yeah. was on the invoice. Correct. And I says, you know what? It's not done, lady. And you're like, oh, you what'd you forget? And I was like, oh, the coolant sensor. No. And you're like, I already told him the price. And I'm like, don't worry. It's only 15 bucks. Every, now everybody knows you make everything up because you're literally making this. I am not making. Vanessa, oh. I remember the conversation. Yes. That's not how it went. Yeah, and then you're screaming at me, and I'm what screaming you at you. What do you call me? Because I remember everything. What did I call you? Yeah, because I remember it all, word for word. Oh, I say, you should have been an archaeologist, because you're always digging up stuff from the past. No, that is not oh. the same as remembering oh. what happened. Uh, elephant? <laughs> nice, you call your wife an elephant? Uh, Google? Google? No, I don't know everything. Oh. I just remember what, do I call you? what happened. Uh, what do you call me? <laughs> I call you a lot of things. Oh, not nice things? No, nice or? thing. Mostly oh. nice things. Anyways. What? what I gave you the total, and you said, I was, you gave me a look, like, that wasn't yeah, right. And then right. I asked you, and yeah. I got the phone, like, that's... Yeah, I said you got to like, add the sensor to it. You didn't say add it. You, you said there say, was I, a sensor. You didn't say add it at that I point. I love you, Vanessa. You matter. I love you.
Oh, me too. I don't really think I call her anything. She's making that part up. Uh, I think this just probably pulls out would be my guess. Oh yeah. <laughs> Grenade pin, so that just pulls out. That's what locks her straight. Well, make sure everything is plugged in. And it is. And then we'll grab this old hoopty over here. And we have to feed the wires back through. They came through the steering wheel and on the bottom side of the of the uh, wire here, I believe. <laughs> I don't know, I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure that's where they came through. They came through there. And then there's the peg. The little peg will line itself up. It should. And we'll get our steering wheel back on where it was. Are we on back where it was? Are we one notch over? Let me just see what it looks like one notch over the other way. Too far? Definitely wrong that way. Definitely right that way. And I gotta wiggle this around a bit. No, I missed it all. Um, I had a question about this paper. The fella does? Mm -hmm. Okay, just a minute. Oh, that's a recall on his car. Yeah. That's his recall paper. Where is it? Let me see. Oh, it's well, that looks good. You know, and I just like to kind of test fit stuff and uh, whatnot. <laughs> because let's be honest here, I don't want to admit that, like, you know, I did not put the steering column covers on first. <laughs> I just like to test fit. So now that we know it's test fitted properly, let's uh, get this little guy back. I got distracted. Miss O comes out there's talking to me. It's almost lunchtime. I'm done making excuses. I simply forgot. I would have remembered when the job was all done. I was like, what did I forget? Oh yeah, how about putting the steering column covers back on? Which uh, evidently can be put on prior or after putting the steering wheel on because it can be removed prior to removing the wheel according to service data. Right? So, no big deal. So when you're putting your steering wheel on, this is a little white donger. This will line up in the back of the steering wheel, I'll show you. So there's that. And then we got the screw that goes underneath it, which we will get here momentarily. But we'll put this thing back on first. This hook down into the bottom half. It's a good thing I played with Legos as a kid. That has empowered me to work on cars as an adult. Because these stupid things just all click and snap together. You know, a lot of people gripe about them, like, oh, these modern day cars ain't no screws. My 77 Buick had screws. Like, I kind of like plastic to a certain degree. It does make things a little easier when you just go like this. You're not digging through this mountain of screws. So, I, I will put that one screw in the bottom, folks. Don't you worry. Now, that peg on the back side is going to line up in this hole over here. You see what I'm saying? Know what I mean, Jelly Bean? And then we'll get our connectors back through. Because we know they fit, because we test fitted them. Line up our white marks. Line up our connector, because that's going to slip right in at the same time. That should line up our peg. I can see the little peg come through the hole over here. And that's back. And this is all I'm trying to make a video. Desperately trying. Well, so I'm trying to teach three kids and run a business, so... You, you are such a good wife. I don't know. What do you need? If you want sympathy for me. I, I sympathize with you. Napa rep is here. Oh, the Napper guy? Mm -hmm. Is he coming to sponsor the show? Probably not. Oh, that sucks. Sorry, folks, no sponsorship. <laughs> I tried, though. It's all sponsor me. Is this not open? You got to cut the tip off these? Apparently. So we're going to put a little Loctite on it. This is brought to you by Permatex. It's the new orange Loctite. Power of red, but releases like blue. Don't ask me how that works. That's going to go fling it in the car. Let me open the door. So I'm not rude. See if I can do this without cutting my finger. Oh, there we go. And landed outside. Perfect. I don't have any green. Green is usually sleeve retainer. 
uh, or wicking. They make a green and a wicking formula. Super high strength. This stuff works pretty well. Been using some of this orange. Been happy with it. So there's that. Make sure we got good coverage. The last thing you want is your steering wheel to go flying off. Trust me. That's embarrassing when a customer calls you and says, Hey, I'm driving down the road. My steering wheel flew off. Fortunately, I've never had that phone call yet. We're not going to start today. So I'm going to tighten this up. Look up the torque spec. Get a torque wrench. Go find a helper to hold it for me. There he is. We plug that in. That's plugged in. No reason we can't put this together, right? Been interrupted too many times here. Good luck getting that off next time, you mother lover. Okay, where are we here? Honk, honk. Let's plug in the honker. That's going to go right up on there. You'll hear it click. And then we've got these little guys. Gray one goes in the gray hole. And guess where the green one goes? In the green hole. And then not pinch your wires but very gingerly stick it right there right there just like I said that looks good now these had a little bit of green lactate on them too so we're gonna just put a little dab or do of the orange this stuff's wicked expensive for a 0.34 fluid ounce bottle I'll tell you that much I don't know much, but I know that much, so I'll get these back in there. You know, if we were using our noodle, we would have checked prior to putting this all together that we did not spin the steering angle sensor, because that would kind of stink if we had that in there 180 off, because we weren't paying attention and it got spun around town on us, you know. I guess we'll have to take our chance that one's torqued and then we'll put a little bit of orange goo on this one the only thing more embarrassing than your tires falling or your steering wheel falling off is your airbag falling out I think we got it. Feels like it. Not cross threading. Even though cross threads are better than Loctite. Did I go the wrong way? I think I did. Let's straighten up our wheels. So I hooked up the battery. Just had to go out in the parking lot and save a lady. Basically saved her life. Not really. Uh, but the uh, these older folks that buy fancy cars um, let this thing get connected here. Uh, and then they fiddle with steering wheel buttons and then they can't see their speedometer anymore. I just had to help the lady get her speedometer back. So no big deal. Not really hero status. All right, it was nothing, really. Let's see, we should still be connected. Let's go into our airbag system. Oh, we're going to have to turn the key on. All right, key's on. So let's see what it says now. We got any lights? No airbag light. Let's go to trouble codes permanent DTCs we want to erase them we don't have an airbag light on though so that's good turn ignition switch off check and then we wait and then we turn it on double tap okay read the codes no codes so let's go ahead and fire this pig up <clears throat> wait, wait. We still got to put the screw in the bottom. Let's see, does the menu buttons work? Hey, look at that, our menu buttons work now. We can go down through our menus. It's got a low tire, we got to fix that. All right, and then the moment of truth, we will turn the wheel. Keep your face way back. Use your left hand if you're right-handed. That way if it explodes, you lose a hand you don't need. All right, no airbag light. We did, and our info buttons work. So that's kind of nice. And then if we go to trouble codes, 
no trouble coats detected. So we're good. We're happy. All the buttons work. There's that. Assume all these buttons work. Yeah, the cruise button works. So everything else should still work. Uh, this is for the radio. However, that turns on. Home, volume. We'll figure all that out. Source. Whoa, too many buttons here, fella. Last but not least, we have to look at our steering angle because we want to make sure we don't have that in there all hoopty. And we will come down here. We're at zero degrees. Make sure our steering wheel is straight. We could go through and just do a quick calibration on it, but if straight is straight, yeah, we're within within one degree. Uh, like right, let's see here. That looks perfectly straight to me, to my eye, and the value is at one. So no sense in really correcting anything here. So we're going all the way left, 586 degrees. And then we're gonna go all the way right, 555 degrees. I'll we'll bring her back here to the middle, wherever the middle is, and we're at zero, and the steering wheel looks pretty dang straight to me, so um, I'm happy with that. So we will leave it at that. Got to put the last screw in, which is right here. We'll put that up in the bottom of the column. We will put air in our left front tire, and then flush this toilet. Easy fix, easy diagnosis. A lot of you might think I'm crazy just going, you know, make an assumption these buttons don't work, airbag lights on, probably a clock spring. That was just a big fat guess. If I got in there and I was wrong, well, then I was wrong and we, we move out. We didn't have a ton of time into it, to be honest with you. If it wasn't on the camera, you know, 15 minutes is all we wasted uh, or potentially could have wasted. And, you know, we would have known. I would have been surprised if it was something else other either because, you know, with the airbag, Plus the buttons, it's the only thing that really made sense. We could have checked the other part of that clock spring with all the pins in it, like that 20 pin connector, found which one ran these buttons, found out which one of them was open. But frankly, it was easier to use the shorting bar inside there to our advantage. You know, the wire should have been just a continuous loop down through the coil, back out and up to the airbag connector. It should have been close to zero ohms or you know, an ohm, whatever, you know, whatever resistance is in those windings, which should be minimal. Um, and then, you know, I showed you right there, you know, the one was testing, eh, so-so, you know, three ohms. Okay, we could have spun it and found the bad spot. But the fact that the one side of the airbag was, you know, up in thousands of ohms, that's, you know, that's a dead giveaway. It's either, you know, the shorting bar has a ton of resistance in it, which is, you know, pretty unlikely. Or, you know, we just had it open or high resistance. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, how about you guys go down there and stop resisting and leave a question, a comment, criticism, concern down in that comment box while you're down there. Subscribe, ring that bell, and just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.